Hello and welcome to the Semester in Review edition of Falcon Update on MC77. I'm Mario Cosentino. And I'm Jordan Zerker. After a, almost a full semester of construction, some students are raising questions about the difficulties traveling around campus. Mario Cosentino takes a look. Going around the fenced-in area while walking to class is an annoyance to many students here on campus, but for those with a physical disability, getting around campus has become an increasingly difficult task. The college's Office of Disabilities has recently worked with campus operations to create a focus group to better understand the needs of these students. We talked to the Director of Disability Services, Amy Slody, about the focus group and the impact of the fence on students. And we recently had what's called a focus group where we invited all students registered with our office to sit in a meeting and to just voice their concerns. Um, where are you struggling? Why are you struggling? Do you have ideas or suggestions on what the school can do um, to advance um, or help individuals who have needs that they don't feel are being met? We had eight students come to that focus group, and I think um, Chris Hansen Kiefer and, Ka Kiefer and Kathy Schaefer did an excellent job listening to what their struggles were and um, ideas on how to make campus better. Outside of the focus group, Amy estimates that she has had close to 20 students talk to her about physical disabilities and mental issues such as stress and anxiety that had been related to the fence. So for me, I found the focus group just very beneficial because I heard a whole picture. So each student there brought their story. Um, which is always, I think, important for people to listen to people's stories because it gives you a sense of where they're coming from and their challenges. Some of the ideas that came out of the focus group were the addition of handicapped spaces near Boyer and giving special card access to students with limited mobility. They are also working on creating a no-wheel zone in front of the library in Hostetter Chapel, which will help improve the traffic flow in between classes. I really believe that focus group was a step towards making real change on campus. Um, hearing it from me is entirely different than hearing it from the students who are actually suffering. The offices of disabilities and college operations are working closely together to better provide for the needs of students on campus regarding the fence, and they will continue to work together even after construction is over. This is Mario Cosentino. Back to you, Jordan. Earlier in the semester, Mellinger residents were evacuated due to a fire in the building. The incident was due to a grease splash while a student was cooking. Fire equipment and first responders were called to the scene, making for some excitement on campus. Students from the apartment were relocated temporarily while the apartment was cleaned. No injuries were reported. Messiah College students, faculty, and staff found a good way to give back to the environment this fall. Jesse Morgan has more on the tree planting project. This is right here where Messiah College faculty, students, and community members gather together to give back to the environment. On Monday, October 21st, a group of individuals passionate about caring for the environment gathered together to plant trees in three locations across the Messiah College campus. By the end of the day, a total of 180 new trees were planted. In preparation for the construction of the Kim S. Phipps Admissions and Welcome Center, a number of trees were cut down to make way for the new additions. Luckily, the Office of Sustainability recognized the impact that this would have. They began an initiative to plant trees behind the baseball field, behind the library, and by the men's restoration house. Messiah's Office of Sustainability has been working to become part of the Audubon Cooperative Sanctuary Program, an educational and certification program that helps various organizations protect their environmental management systems. Because of this, Messiah students will have a chance to name each tree grove. A vote was taken to see what these new tree groves should be named, and students came up with the Grand Slam Grove, Creekside Grove, and Fleers Grove. Messiah College is committed to keeping these trees for at least 30 years as part of their partnership with the Alliance for the Chesapeake Bay. This nonprofit organization, focused on conservation efforts in Maryland, D.C., Virginia, and Pennsylvania, supplied the trees and necessary resources. The Alliance for the Chesapeake Bay is one of the oldest and most well-respected nonprofits working throughout the Chesapeake Bay watershed. Twenty different species were selected based on their native habitats in order to encourage having native animals and insects. These trees will also help with stream health by cooling and filtering the yellow breaches, as well as fortifying the banks with their roots. Yeah, I think this 
This is a great idea that Messiah College is doing here to, to rectify all the damage that has been done to the environment from the construction project in the center of campus. When these trees are fully grown, it's going to be an absolutely gorgeous place to sit down, study, relax, hammock, and I think it will be a very popular place on campus, especially in its proximity to the Yellow Breaches Creek, which is already very popular as it is. And now, almost a month after the tree planting, the Office of Sustainability reports that the new planted trees are continuing to grow. Thanks to the hard work and careful planting of the volunteers, the young trees have survived despite facing heavy rain, flash flooding, strong winds, and debris. Volunteers have been checking on the new tree groves every week and will continue to deliver updates on their progress. So, as you can see here, these trees haven't fully matured yet, but this is definitely a space you want to keep your eye on. For MC77, I'm Paul Callender. This November, Messiah College's Theater National Honor Society staged The Insanity of Mary Gerard. Our Jordan Zerker provides an inside look at the production. On November 2nd, Messiah College's Alpha Psi Omega, the Theater National Honor Society, performed an entirely student-run production of The Insanity of Mary Gerard. From the actors, to the stage management, to the director, everyone involved in the production were Messiah College students. In fact, all the actors were non-theater majors. Abby Johnson, the stage manager for the show, added why she was glad to be involved in APO. People think you can only get involved if you're a major or a minor, and we just showed that that's completely untrue. So if you have any interest in theater, please come check us out. Uh, you don't have to have any previous experience. Um, we'd just love to have you. So. Uh, get involved and come see our performances, come, uh, come find out what we're about. For the students involved in the production, APO allows opportunities to explore interest in theater, whether technical or on stage. Josh Murray is an English education major who plays the role of the warder, Stephen Gerrard, and a fury. He explained how APO challenged him this show. The most difficult aspect of this show is it has me doing two things that I've not done before. Firstly, an accent. Um, which has been very difficult. I've been very fortunate to have an accent coach, um, Abby Johnson, who's done a great job of helping me through that. Along with that, we've also had a lot of physicality that I've just not done before and stage fighting that has made this production, although fun, very difficult and very challenging as an actor. Kat Kelly is a senior psychology major who plays a fury as well as Mrs. Lum in the production. She explained why APO was perfect for her. I was a theater kid in high school and like middle school, um, and so I missed doing theater. And um, auditioning for a main stage show kind of intimidated me. And so when I heard about APO and it being student-run shows, um, it was really cool. The Insanity of Mary Gerard tells the story of a young woman who was put in a sane asylum by her husband after becoming pregnant. A series of flashbacks reveal more about her life and the circumstances that led to her placement in the asylum. The two performances took place on Saturday, November 2nd, and were very successful, with one show selling out. To find out more information about the upcoming shows and opportunities, check out the theater call board in the basement of Kleimenhaga. Although the spring show for Alpha Psi Omega has not been decided yet, be sure to come back to the Black Box Theater here at Messiah College to see what comes next. Back to you guys. When Falcon Update continues, we'll look back at an annual celebration and begin our look at sports. Stay with us. Ready to go? I sure am. My sleep has been great ever since I started treatment for sleep apnea. Well, nearly 30 million adults have it, including me. Now, let me guess. It was your snoring that gave it away? Mm. Oh, yes, it was. And intense snoring is one of the classic signs. Other signs include gasping for breath during sleep and daytime sleepiness. If untreated, the risk of heart disease and stroke increases. I didn't know that, but I'm glad to hear the treatment can help. Certainly can. To learn more about the warning signs, visit DefendSleep.com. Forests bring people together, feed the soul, and improve our well-being. Cleaning the water we need, 
the air we breathe, and making our climate livable. Fires and natural disasters devastate our forests each year. That's why the Arbor Day Foundation is working to replant millions of trees across the country. Visit arborday.org and see how you can help. Welcome back to MC77 Semester in Review. I'm Jordan Zerker. The Maasai College Multicultural Council brought their annual Karibu Night celebration to campus this fall. Jake Maya Kaczynski reports domestic and international students were welcomed to a night in Africa. It's that time of year again for the Maasai College Multicultural Council. The African Student Union hosted their annual Karibu Night, welcoming international and domestic students for a night in Africa. Many student performers did not fail to keep the audience entertained throughout the night. Audience members enjoyed a wide variety of African traditions. Performances ranged from spoken words to dance to singing and drumming. Lark Daniel made her second appearance at Messiah with her daughter, Kezia Daniel, dancing traditional dances from across Africa. We just want to remind our youth and the community that this is where things started and those traditions and what we did were done for a reason. So right now today you see a lot of things happening and people are just doing stuff to be doing it. But when they traditionally did these dances, they did them for a reason, they had purpose. A wide variety of food was also served at the event from different countries represented at Karibu Night, including Uganda, Ethiopia, and Tanzania. Students dressed to impress as they wore attire from home countries or from places they have visited. Senior Jaira Bagandera wore a traditional outfit from his home country of Uganda. This outfit is a, what is it, a friend gave it to me, it's material from her culture, she's from Mozambique, okay. um, so a lot of men will just wrap themselves in stuff. And the shorts are important because guys need shorts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. I got to study abroad in Uganda last fall, and I think one of my favorite memories from my time in Uganda was just all of the relationships that I got to form, particularly with my host family. Um, my host parents and my little brother, we really got to bond and have some great memories during that time. Members of the African Student Union, professors, and students took part in a fashion show at the end of the event. If you missed it this year, don't worry. The African Student Union is prepping for next year's Karibu Night. Also, Multicultural Council's International Gala is set for this spring. For more information, follow Multicultural Council's Instagram at MC Multicultural Council. With MC77, I'm Jacob Myazinski. Turning to sports, fall sports continue their tradition of reaching the national stage. The women's field hockey team lost in the second round of the national tournament after notching a win on home turf. The men's soccer team lost in the Sweet 16 round of the NCAAs. And as we go to the press, the women's soccer team is preparing for the national final four in North Carolina as they seek their sixth national championship in 13 trips to the final four. Tune in to our next Falcon update December 9th at 7 o'clock for highlights here on MC77. The Messiah men's basketball team began their 2019-2020 season in November with a win at Catholic University before hosting their annual tip-off tournament in Hitchcock Arena. Brendan Labra followed the team through the weekend. The Messiah men's basketball tournament has been a staple in Messiah sports for the past couple of years. We talked more about it with the players and coaches. So ahead of this season, how has the team changed in terms of returning players? Um, how has that been different from years past? Well, we have uh, a very experienced team this year. Um, we only graduated one senior from last year, so have a lot of the same pieces back. Um, and probably in my 17 years of coaching, might be the most experienced team that we've had um, coming back from the previous year. We talked to senior Josh Darville about being a veteran leader on the team. So we've talked a lot about how this team has a lot of experience this season and you're one of the many returning players and a senior. How can you step into a leadership role this season? Um, just leading by example, um, not just like talking to talk, but you know, like walking the walk. Uh, we got, like you said, we got a lot of veteran guys and um, you know, just coming back into my final season, that's just one thing that I really wanted to focus on is just being 
uh, not only a vocal leader, but also like lead with my actions. One of the Falcons' returners from last year, sophomore EJ Porter, spoke to us about how he can contribute to the team's overall success in the tip-off tournament. You had 22 points last night and went 6 for 9 from the field on three-pointers. Have you felt your role changing from freshman year? Um, a little bit. I would just say uh, Coach has definitely given me more confidence um, when it comes to like shot selection and being able to just play freely out there and not having to think as much. So. And looking at at the next upcoming game against Chris or Newport, what is your game plan going into that one? Um, really just focusing on the defensive end. Um, they're a really good team, obviously. Um, just trying to make sure we stay focused, locked in on defense, and let the offense come to us. Coach Van Pelt also expanded on the team's goals and expectations for the upcoming season following the tip-off tournament. Well, uh, you know, we, we have pretty high expectations for ourselves uh, every year, um, but with the veterans coming back with the the players that we have the experience that we have um, you know we, we we feel like we can compete in every single game uh, if we play well and play to our capabilities that we, we should be in a really good position uh, to be successful and that's a wrap from the messiah men's basketball tip-off tournament the play of the boys today was very encouraging and leaves hope for the upcoming season this has been brendan labra back to you guys in the studio messiah college is adding a team to campus this year the new eSports team has received official recognition and will participate in competitive play against other colleges under the National Association of Collegiate eSports. To begin, the team will feature competition in a variety of video games, including League of Legends, Overwatch, Hearthstone, Rocket League, and Smash Bros. Ultimate. Tryouts have been held over the last month, and a dedicated practice space has been created in Mellinger Basement to house the team. Among the intellectual highlights of this fall was a lecture titled The Political Argument Today by Washington Post syndicated columnist George Will. His work appears twice weekly in approximately 500 newspapers across the country and in Europe. He also appears on MSNBC and NBC News as a contributor. When we return to the semester in review edition of Falcon Update, we'll preview another winter sports team season and report on a project taking place just outside our studios. Keep it right here on MC77. It's a big responsibility. Oh, it's huge. I know, it's huge. Yeah, and the salary. Oh, my goodness, yes. Right. I mean, like, I was literally, I was about to move in with my parents, and <laughs> right before, yeah, yeah, so this saved me. I, I really believe in you, you know? Thank you. It's nice to hear that from someone. <laughs> These are cool. Did you, um, what did you? contest you still got it I know come alive with the forest visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you forests bring people together feed the soul and improve our well-being cleaning the water we need the air we breathe and making our climate livable fires and natural disasters devastate our forests each year that's why the Arbor Day Foundation is working to replant millions of trees across the country Visit arborday.org and see how you can help. Masai College's wrestling team has started the season undefeated and will be hosting a tournament Friday and Saturday this week. Durant Wells reports the team has been conditioning and training since October. Messiah College is preparing to move their digital video editing lab from the basement of Murray Library to the site of the former Early Learning Center in Hostetter Chapel, right next door to our MC77 studios. Nolan Hagenboom has more on the changes. I'm standing in front of the former site of the Messiah College Early Learning Center, but something else will be taking its place very shortly, the Communication Department's editing lab. Messiah College shut down the Early Learning Center last spring because it was losing money. They decided to move the editing lab from its current location underneath Murray Library, next door, under Hostetter Chapel. IT will be taking its place in the library. Uh, myself and a few other people from the Department of Communications went to our department head, who went to the head of the, the School of Humanities and such and such, and we asked to if we could move the stuff from Murray over to Hostetter. The process for that move started quickly and Messiah's students who use the editing lab should be seeing progress soon. As of right now, 
Construction is supposed to start at the beginning of 2020, and we hope to be moving the lab over sometime before the end of the semester. The, the true hope is that we are able to move the editing lab over during spring break. Since the move was announced, general reaction from students and staff alike has been supportive. So our day starts at 10.30, and at 1.10, we switch over from the studio and walk to the library, um, to the editing lab, which is a little inconvenient, considering half a dozen of us are taking both of those classes. And it would certainly be nicer if they were you know, in the same space. So the movement of the editing space uh, to the basement of Hostetter will probably be positive, uh, just because a lot of the uh, equipment that we use as film students is in that space already. We use the studio a lot. We have classes in the studio, and we often like move from that class to an editing space. Uh, as far as just location, like that'll probably be positive. It, it can't be a negative change. Um, <coughs> the the fact that for teaching alone, uh, we're because the editing lab now is in the same building, same floor as the studio. They'll actually be able to hold their classes full time now in the editing lab, um, rather than having to lug equipment across campus or pack up all of our stuff and go to another place. There you have it, the moving of the editing lab. A good idea, a quick process, and a positive change. For MC77, I'm Nolan hogan Boo. Messiah College's wrestling team has started the season undefeated and will be hosting a tournament Friday and Saturday this week. Durant Wells reports the team has been conditioning and training since October. I'm Jonathan Melcher, and here's an outlook of what the wrestling season is going to look like. After claiming their sixth straight regional title last year, the Messiah wrestling team is gearing up for their 17th season. I love the sport of wrestling. Um, I love the battle. I love um, the training. I love the discipline. I love the process of trying to figure out what's going to work and what's not going to work. I love competition. Um, all those things. Um, but um, those are all just fun things. So I often say that for us, winning is a goal, but it's not our purpose. I'm Jonathan Melcher, and here's an outlook of what the wrestling season is going to look like. I'm going to lean back and roll. I'm going to hit. I'm going to lock something. I'm going to lean back and roll. After claiming their sixth straight regional title last year, the Messiah wrestling team is gearing up for their 17th season. I love the sport of wrestling. Um, I love the battle. I love um, the training. I love the discipline. I love the process of trying to figure out what's going to work and what's not going to work. I love competition. Um, all those things. Um, but um, those are all just fun things. So I often say that for us, winning is a goal, but it's not our purpose. Our purpose is to know Christ. The Falcons are returning 25 wrestlers from last year's roster and bringing seven new athletes to the program. They have nine wrestlers that competed in regionals last year, ready to take down this season, with five of them being former national qualifiers. The team, and I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, personally, I, I aspire to be an All-American this year, so top eight in the country. Um, I, I was a national qualifier last year, but I didn't win any matches there. But getting that experience, I think, um, will really help me to push myself farther this year. With this year's theme being All-In, Coach Brunk pushes all 32 wrestlers to their fullest potential while also emphasizing God through practice. And when my friend got slammed on his neck, we were all very worried, very scared. And a few minutes after that happens, all right, is every, the paramedics and the ambulance people taking care of him, um, my, the whole team, just Messiah College, just gets in a prayer circle, starts praying. I didn't even realize this till after we were done praying, but within seconds of us gathering, the Central College team all just came over and prayed with us and prayed for my friend Garrett. The Messiah wrestling team understands the importance of bonding and looking after their brother. It fosters an environment that pushes them spiritually, mentally, and emotionally, despite the physical challenges. It's probably the brotherhood. 
Uh, I think that we have done a really good job of forming bonds with, uh, with our teammates. Be sure to cheer on your fellow Falcons at upcoming wrestling tournaments. The team schedule can be found on GoMessiah.com. This is Durant Well signing off. The Angle Center recently got a new puppy, Amari, which will be trained as a seeing eye dog. Amari joined the campus community after former hero in training Isaac left for advanced training from the seeing eye. Amari will remain on campus for a year and currently spends time in the Office of Disability Services in the library. The Messiah College Office of Sustainability is partnering with Spoken True Bike Club to offer an on-campus bike share program. The idea is to provide students with a sustainable and easy way to get around campus that leaves out the cost of buying and maintaining a bike. A small fee of $15 a semester is all that is needed to rent a bike for a day or for a longer period of time. Students who want to rent a bike can pick up a rental contract on the college's website or at the Office of Sustainability in Eisenhower. You're watching MC77 Semester in Review Special. We'll be right back. Hey, ready to go? I sure am. My sleep has been great ever since I started treatment for sleep apnea. Well, nearly 30 million adults have it, including me. Now, let me guess. It was your snoring that gave it away? Mm. Oh, yes, it was. And intense snoring is one of the classic signs. Other signs include gasping for breath during sleep and daytime sleepiness. If untreated, the risk of heart disease and stroke increases. I didn't know that, but I'm glad to hear the treatment can help. Certainly can. To learn more about the warning signs, visit DefendSleep.com. Well, that's our show. We hope you've enjoyed looking back at the fall semester. We've tried to capture some of the highlights from this fall. Sorry if we've missed one of your memorable moments. For the entire MC77 staff and for Jordan Zerker, I'm Mario Cosentino. Be sure to tune in again Monday, December 9th for our next live Falcon Update and MC Live show at 7 p.m. on MC77. Good luck finishing out the semester and a Merry Christmas. Welcome back to MC77. Here's this week's campus calendar. This Tuesday, December 3rd, the Jazz Combo Concert will be held in the High Center from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. The ensemble will be directed by Todd Grinson. This event is free and open to the public. Starting December 6th, there will be an art exhibition featuring the works of Nora Sturgis entitled Postcards from the Unknown. The gallery will be held in Kleimenhega from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. On Friday, December 6th, there will be an artist talk and reception starting at 4.15 to all who are interested held in the High Center's recital hall. This weekend kicks off the start of the 2019 Fall Senior Series. This weekend's show will be directed and performed by James Lim and featuring Rachel Lauber. It is entitled Aku Jelajahi, or I Will Travel. There will be shows on both December 6th and 7th at 8 p.m. and on December 7th at 3 p.m. This show will be held in the Grace Pollock Dance Studio in Kleimenhega. Please note that this show does contain mature content and viewer discretion is advised. Tickets are $5 and can be purchased at the ticket office. This show has been made, created, and will be presented by department seniors, so come out and support your fellow Falcons. Following that, on December 8th, the Messiah College Christmas Concert will be held in Palmer Hall from 7.30 to 9 p.m. Tickets are $3 for Messiah College students with an ID and can be purchased from the ticket office. This is a great way to kick off the official Christmas season. The concert will be including groups like brass quintets, handbells, men's and women's ensembles, and the concert choir, to name a few. That's all for this week's campus calendar. I'm Kelsey McCann.